welcome each and every one of you to the reading of the precious eternal Word of God. And on this April 3, I will not sing a song as we reflect on this time that Jesus has died and he's in the tomb and the people of that day are, they're crushed, they're crushed. But instead we will read from Luke what we were not able to read in tribute yesterday. And a great multitude of the people followed him and women who also mourned and lamented him. But Jesus, turning to them, said, Daughters of Jerusalem, do not weep for me, but weep for yourselves and for your children. For indeed the days are coming in which they will say, Blessed are the barren, wombs that never bore and breasts that never nursed. And then they will begin to say to the mountains, fall on us and to the hills, cover us. Can you imagine such terror? For if they do these things in the green wood, in the green wood, what will be done in the dry? And there were also two others, criminals, led with him to be put to death. And when they had come to the place called Calvary, there they crucified him and the criminals, one on the right hand and the other on the left. And I believe it was one tree. And then Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they do. And they divided his garments and cast lots. And the people stood looking on, but even the rulers with them sneered, saying, He saved others. Let him save himself if he is the Christ, the chosen of God. And the soldiers also mocked him, coming and offering him sour wine and saying, If you are the king of the Jews, save yourself. And an inscription also was written over him in letters of Greek, Latin, and Hebrew. This is the king of the Jews. And then one of the criminals who were hanged blasphemed him, saying, If you are the Christ, save yourselves and us. But the other, answering, rebuked him, saying, Do you not even fear God, seeing you are under the same condemnation? And indeed, we justly, for we receive the due reward of our deeds, but this man has done nothing wrong. And then he said to Jesus, Lord, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And even hanging there dying, Jesus said to him, Assuredly, I say to you, today you will be with me in paradise. Now, it was about the sixth hour, and there was darkness over all the earth until the ninth hour, darkness, pitch black. Imagine standing there three hours. And then the sun was darkened and the veil of the temple was torn in two. And when Jesus had cried out with a loud voice, and remember this word here, this word in Hebrew for loud, same word that was used when they stood at the bottom of the mountain of Sinai and the people begged, begged, please tell God, no, we can't stand it. The mountain shook. We're talking about loud like we've never heard. Loud voice, he said, Father, into your hands I commit 
my spirit. And having said this, he breathed his last. So when the centurion saw what had happened, he glorified God. Throwing dice for the clothes was over. Sneering was over. He glorified God, saying, Certainly, this was a righteous man. And the whole crowd who came together to that site, seeing what had been done, beat their breasts and returned. But all his acquaintances and the women who followed him from Galilee stood at a distance watching these things. Now behold, there was a man named Joseph, a council member, a good and just man. He had not consented to their decision. Indeed, he was from Arimathea, a city of the Jews, who himself was also waiting for the kingdom of God. This man went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. And then he took it down, wrapped it in linen, and laid it in a tomb, his own tomb, that was hewn out of a rock where no one had ever lain before. That day was the preparation, and the Shabbat drew near. And the women who had come with him from Galilee followed after and they observed the tomb and how his body was laid. And then they returned and prepared spices and fragrant oils. And they rested on the Shabbat according to the commandment. And that's where we are on this day. So we will turn now to Deuteronomy, Dabarim, chapter 23, and we will continue on with Moses' dissertation of preparation to go in and begin the killing, begin cleaning out, begin taking over the land. He who is emasculated by crushing or mutilation shall not enter the assembly of the Lord. One of the illegitimate birth shall not enter the assembly of the Lord. Even to the tenth generation, none of his descendants shall enter the assembly of the Lord. An Ammonite or Moabite shall not enter the assembly of the Lord, even to the tenth generation. None of his descendants shall enter the assembly of the Lord forever, because they did not meet you with bread and water on the road when you came out of Egypt, and because they hired against you Balaam, the son of Beor, from Petor of Mesopotamia, to curse you. Nevertheless, the Lord your God would not listen to Balaam, but the Lord your God turned the curse into a blessing for you because the Lord your God loves you, loves you. You shall not seek their peace nor their prosperity all your days forever. You shall not abhor an Edomite, for he is your brother. You shall not abhor an Egyptian because you were an alien in his land. The children of the third generation born to them may enter the assembly of the Lord. When the army goes out against your enemies, then keep yourself from every wicked thing. If there is any man among you who becomes unclean by some occurrence in the night, then he shall go outside the camp. He shall not come inside the camp. But it shall be when evening comes that he shall wash with water, and when the sun sets, he may come into the camp. 
Also, you shall have a place outside the camp where you may go out, and you shall have an implement among your equipment. And when you sit down outside, you shall dig with it and turn and cover your refuse. And that's how they took care of going to the bathroom. For the Lord your God walks in the midst of your camp to deliver you and give your enemies over to you. Therefore, your camp shall be holy, that he may see no unclean thing among you and turn away from you. You shall not give back to his master the slave who has escaped from his master to you. He may dwell with you in your midst, in the place which he chooses within one of your gates, where it seems best to him. You shall not oppress him. There shall be no ritual harlot of the daughters of Israel or a perverted one of the sons of Israel. You shall not bring the wages of a harlot or the price of a dog to the house of the Lord your God, for they vowed offering. For both of these are an abomination to the Lord your God. You shall not charge interest to your brother, interest on money, or food, or anything that is lent out at interest. To a foreigner, you may charge interest, but to your brother, you shall not charge interest, that the Lord your God may bless you in all to which you set your hand in the land which you are entering to possess. When you make a vow to the Lord your God, you shall not delay to pay it. For the Lord your God will surely require it of you, and it would be sin to you. <clears throat> but if you abstain from vowing, it shall not be sin to you. That which has gone from your lips, you shall keep and perform, for you voluntarily vowed to the Lord your God what you have promised with your mouth. And when you come into your neighbor's vineyard, you may eat your fill of grapes at your pleasure, but you shall not put any in your container. Just, just eat now. Just be satisfied. But you're not gathering his groceries. When you come into your neighbor's standing grain, you may pluck the heads with your hand, but you shall not use a sickle on your neighbor's standing grain. And we move along to chapter 24 of Deuteronomy, Dabarim. When a man takes a wife and marries her, and it happens that she finds no favor in his eyes because he has found some uncleanness in her, and he writes her a certificate of divorce, puts it in her hand, and sends her out of his house, when she has departed from his house and goes and becomes another man's wife, if the latter husband detests her and writes her a certificate of divorce, puts it in her hand and sends her out of his house, or if the latter husband dies who took her as his wife, then her former husband who divorced her must not take her back to be his wife after she has been defiled. For that is an abomination before the Lord, and you shall not bring sin on the land which the Lord your God is giving you as an inheritance. When a man has taken a new wife, he shall not go out to war or be charged with any business. He shall be free at home one year. My goodness, we would have a whole lot more happy marriages, wouldn't we? Taking that kind of time. He shall be free at home one year and bring happiness to his wife whom he has taken. 
Wow. How about those attitudes? No man shall take the lower or the upper millstone in pledge, for he takes one's living in pledge. If a man is found kidnapping any of his brethren of the children of Israel and mistreats him or sells him, then that kidnapper shall die. And you shall put away the evil from among you. Take heed, take heed in any outbreak of leprosy that you carefully observe and do according to all that the priests, the Levites, shall teach you, just as I commanded them. So you shall be careful to do. Remember what the Lord your God did to Miriam on the way when you came out of Egypt. Whoa, remember that? She looked and she was covered with leprosy. When you lend your brother anything, you shall not go into his house to get his pledge. You shall stand outside. And the man to whom you lend shall bring the pledge out to you. And if the man is poor, you shall not keep his pledge overnight. You shall in any case return the pledge to him again when the sun goes down that he may sleep in his own garment and bless you. And it shall be righteousness to you before the Lord your God. You shall not oppress a hired servant who is poor and needy, whether one of your brethren or one of your aliens who is in your land within your gates. Each day you shall give him his wages and not let the sun go down on it. For he is poor and has set his heart on it, lest he cry out against you to the Lord and then it be sin to you. Fathers shall not be put to death for their children, nor shall children be put to death for their fathers. A person shall be put to death for his own sin. Oh, my goodness. <clears throat> and look at the new covenant. Jesus went to the cross and paid for our sin. You shall not pervert justice, do the stranger or the fatherless, nor take a widow's garment as a pledge. But you shall remember that you were a slave in Egypt, and the Lord your God redeemed you from there. Therefore, Moshe commanded you to do this thing. When you reap your harvest in your field and forget a sheath in the field, you shall not go back to get it. It shall be for the stranger, the fatherless, and the widow, that the Lord your God may bless you in all the work of your hands. When you beat your olive trees, you shall not go over the boughs again. It shall be for the stranger, the fatherless, and the widow. When you gather the grapes of your vineyard, you shall not glean it afterward. It shall be for the stranger, the fatherless, and the widow. Isn't that beautiful? I mean, you're gathering in your harvest. But knowingly, you are leaving behind something for those who don't have. Wow. That's called a righteous welfare system, I believe. And you shall remember that you were a slave in the land of Egypt. Therefore, I command you to do this thing. If there is a dispute between men and they come to court that the judges may judge them, and they justify the righteous and condemn the wicked, then it shall be, if the wicked man deserves to be beaten, <clears throat> that the judge will cause him to lie down and be beaten in his presence, according to his guilt, with a certain number of blows. How about that? Forty blows 
he may give him and no more. Whoa, we fulfilled that one, didn't we, with Jesus? Lest he should exceed this and beat him with many blows above these, and your brother be humiliated in your sight. You shall not muzzle an ox while it treads out the grain. Let that animal be free. If it wants to lean down and munch him a bit, <laughs> I guess he's saying it's okay. If brothers dwell together and one of them dies and has no son, the widow of the dead man shall not be married to a stranger outside the family. Her husband's brother shall go into her, take her as his wife, and perform the duty of a husband's brother to her. Wow. And it shall be that the firstborn son which she bears will succeed to the name of his dead brother, that his name may not be blotted out of Israel. But if the man does not want to take his brother's wife, then let his brother's wife go up to the gate to the elders and say, my husband's brother refuses to raise up a name to his brother in Israel. He will not perform the duty of my husband's brother. Then the elders of his city shall call him and speak to him. But if he stands firm and says, I do not want to take her, then his brother's wife shall come to him in the presence of the elders, remove his sandal from his foot, spit in his face, and answer and say, so shall it be done to the man who will not build up his brother's house, and his name shall be called in Israel, the house of him who had his sandal removed. Wow. I mean, the ladies understood. Wow. Just think that one over. If two men fight together and the wife of one draws near to rescue her husband from the hand of the one attacking him and puts out her hand and seizes him by the genitals, then you shall cut off her hand. Your eye shall not pity her. You shall not have in your bag different weights a heavy and a light. You shall not have in your house differing measures, a large and a small. You shall have a perfect and just weight, a perfect and just measure, that your days may be lengthened in the land which the Lord your God is giving you. Imagine that. Longer life is tied to that. For all who do such things, all who behave unrighteously, are an abomination. Let's take in the severity of that word, abomination, to the Lord your God. Remember what Amalek did to you on the way as you were coming out of Egypt? How he met you on the way and attacked your rear ranks? All the stragglers at your rear? when you were tired and weary, and he did not fear God. Therefore it shall be when the Lord your God has given you rest from your enemies all around in the land which the Lord your God is giving you to possess as an inheritance, that you will blot out the remembrance of Amalek from under heaven. You shall not forget Y'all, did you take that one in? Okay, let's move right along in the New Testament to Luke. Matthew, Mark, Luke, third gospel, chapter 10, picking up with verse 13. Luke 10, 
13. Woe to you, Chorazin. Woe to you, Bethsaida. For if the mighty works which were done in you had been done in Tyre and Sidon, they would have repented long ago, sitting in sackcloth and ashes. But it will be more tolerable for Tyre and Sidon at the judgment than for you. And you, Capernaum, who are exalted to heaven, will be brought down to Hades. Whoa. I've been to Capernaum a number of times. And I think this as I look around at this city. You will be brought down to Hades. He who hears you hears me. He who rejects you rejects me. And he who rejects me rejects him who sent me. Take that strong statement in. And then the 70, remember he sent out the 70? They returned with joy saying, Lord, even the demons are subject to us in your name. And did he brag on it with them? Listen to his response. And he said to them, Jesus said, I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven. Oh, we used to sing that. I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven. Behold, I give you the authority to trample on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy. And nothing, nothing by any means hurt you. Nevertheless, nevertheless. Do not rejoice in this, that the spirits are subject to you, but rather rejoice because your names are written in heaven. Oh my goodness. Your name is written in heaven if you love him and have asked him to come in. You're living for him. In that hour, Jesus rejoiced in the spirit and said, I thank you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, that you have hidden these things from the wise and the prudent and revealed them to babes. Even so, Father, for so it seemed good in your sight, all things have been delivered to me by my Father, and no one knows who the Son is except the Father, and who the Father is except the Son, and the one to whom the Son wills to reveal him. Wow. And then he turned to his disciples, and he said privately, Blessed are the eyes which see the things you see. For I tell you that many prophets and kings have desired to see what you see and have not seen it. And to hear what you hear and have not heard it. And behold, a certain lawyer stood up and tested him, saying, Teacher, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? And he said to him, What is written in the law? What is your reading of it? And so he answered and said, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength, and with all your mind, and your neighbor as yourself. And Jesus said to him, You have answered rightly. Do this, and you will live. But he, 
wanting to justify himself. He had a little ulterior motive here. He said to Jesus, And who is my neighbor? And then Jesus answered and said, quite a parable here, a certain man went down from Jerusalem to Jericho and fell among thieves who stripped him of his clothing, wounded him, and departed, left him, leaving him half dead. Now by chance, a certain priest came down that road, and when he saw him, he passed by on the other side. Likewise, a Levite, a Levite, when he arrived at the place, came and looked and passed by on the other side. But a certain Samaritan, Jesus brings up their present enemy. that they don't like, they don't like him. But a certain Samaritan, as he journeyed, he came where he was. And when he saw him, he had compassion. So he went to him and he bandaged his wounds, pouring on oil and wine. How about that? pouring on wine and oil. And he set him on his own animal, brought him to an inn, and took care of him. On the next day, on the next day, he took care of him all day and stayed with him all night. On the next day, when he departed, he took out two denarii, and gave them to the innkeeper and said to him, Take care of him, and whatever more you spend, when I come again, I will repay you. So which of these three do you think was neighbor to him who fell among the thieves? And the lawyer said, He who showed mercy on him. And Jesus said to him, Go. Go. And do likewise. In other words, compassion to the ultimate, right? Even if you have to all day, all night, pay the price, pay everything, leave money for more, care. Whoa. Wonderful, wonderful parable for you and me for today. We move right along to Psalm 75. Psalm 75. This, it says here, was a psalm of Asaph, and it was given to the chief musician and set to a tune they called Do Not Destroy. Oh, don't I wish I knew the tune. We give thanks to you, O oh God. We give thanks for your wondrous works. Declare that your name is near. When I choose the proper time, I will judge uprightly. The earth and all its inhabitants are dissolved. Whoa. I set up its pillars firmly. Selah. Stop. Stop the music. Stop the reading. Prostrate yourselves. They did quite a rehearsal. I said to the boastful, do not deal boastfully, and to the wicked, do not lift up the horn. Do not lift up your horn on high. Do not speak with a stiff neck. For exaltation comes neither from the east, nor from the west, nor from the south, but God is the judge. He puts down one and exalts another. For in the hand of the Lord there is a cup, and the wine is red. It is 
fully mixed and he pours it out. Surely its dregs shall all the wicked of the earth drain and drink down. But I will declare forever, I will sing praises to the God of Jacob, Jacob. All the horns of the wicked I will also cut off. But the horns of the righteous shall be exalted. Wow. I mean, there's a lot of heavy words there, right? I mean, that tune must have been fast and furious and heavy. I try to picture how it was. And I could be completely wrong, right? <laughs> All right, we wrap up today, y'all. We wrap up today with Proverbs chapter 12, verse 12. Proverbs chapter 12, verse 12 through 14. The wicked covet the catch of evil men. Oh, they're all trying to, like lobsters, going over one another, trying to be the top person, aren't they? The wicked covet the catch of evil men, but the root of the righteous yields fruit. Fruit. The wicked is ensnared by the transgression of his lips, but the righteous will come through trouble. A man will be satisfied with good by the fruit of his mouth. And the recompense, the paycheck of a man's hands will be rendered to him. Oh boy. That is a powerful portion of Proverbs, isn't it? Let's wrap it up in prayer, y'all, on this. For me, it's a solemn day. Whatever it is for you, let it be in the Lord. Father God, all these precious sons and daughters of yours have come to hear your word. I have come. To hear your word, the truth. Nothing else today is worth standing on. Just your word. And we thank you for it. I hold it up, Lord. And I thank you for your word. I thank you that I have it yet in my hands. And that I have the joys of reading it, storing it taking it from here and hearing it. Faith cometh by hearing. So read it out loud every chance you can. You'll get so much more out of it. Father God, thank you for your word. We store it in our spirits and our hearts this day. Hopefully to never leave that we can always draw upon it on a daily basis so we can walk a righteous path straight and pure the path you have for us thank you jesus thank you jesus we know that you've already cried it is finished and you've already gone and you're you're at the right hand side of your precious father our father and you are yet interceding for us you're interceding for us oh my so wonderful. And you have sent Holy Ghost to us. Wonderful Rakakodesh. You have sent him to us. Oh, Rakakodesh, I have invited you in to live inside me. To speak with me and comfort me and help me and guide me. I'm not alone. You're with me, Holy Ghost. You're with the sons and the daughters of the Most High God. You are powerful. You are free. You are not confined. You are free to be everywhere all at once. Everywhere. Ministering to everybody. All at once. 
at once. That's the kind of God we serve. The only God, the only living God. The only living three persons in one. And we thank you, Lord. We respect you. We, we revere you. We, we fear you with holy fear today. We are grateful, Lord, to be able to celebrate on a yearly basis all that you did for us. And you are with us on a daily basis. We don't even know what the rest of today brings, but we know you are with us. So whatever it is, you will be there. Father God, I hold up Israel. I hold up Israel. They've been celebrating the Passover. They've been recounting the whole story of Egypt and being slaves and coming out. And Lord, we rejoice with them. We rejoice. You were, you were bringing us together. You were bringing Jew and Gentile together as one man, one new man, one new man. We bless you for it, Lord. We thank you. We give you praise. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Hallelujah. Oh, precious Jesus. Precious Jesus. Be with each and every one of us today, Lord. Be with us. Oh, hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Let peace reign, Lord, in Jerusalem. Let peace reign. Hallelujah to the Lamb. I hold up America to you, Lord. I hold up America. And we are believing for a great revival. A great revival, not only across all of this country, but across every country of the world. One last final in gathering, Lord, in these end days, these end times. Building up your kingdom. Redeeming and saving every last person that would invite you in. And we thank you for that, Jesus. We hold up, Lord, many, many friends and relatives at this time. And, and, and during this whole Holy Week and, and through the weekend, Lord, many of us have visitors, friends, relatives have come. Lord, I'm asking that it be a time of a witness of you a witness that there be joy in the home now that we have we are we are wrapping up the solemn time of the passion and good friday's death and memorial and saturday's absence of the lord while in the tomb although he was up going down, taking the keys out of the hand of Satan, doing a lot of things. But they didn't know it at that time. But they would soon know it. So, Father, we, we have expectancy today, too. Expectancy. Preparation is going on for resurrection. Homes are getting ready. Ladies are making food today and getting ready for a great gathering of their family and their friends. Lord, we thank you. And we hang on to our freedom to be able to do this. We don't count heads. We say all are invited. All are invited to the coming celebration. So, Lord, I'd ask you to hear the prayers and bring answers, Lord, and, and bring healing. Bring healing on this day. Bring uplifting of those who have been depressed and down. We come against those demonic spirits. We, we break your hold. We say you will not hold people down, but they will burst into joy over you. There will be new people that the light bulb will go on, and they will say, I understand it for the first time. I get it. I get it. I get the story. I get what Jesus did. Oh, Lord, let many across this earth have that realization today. 
Let many, many, we will give you all the praise and all the glory and all God's people. Cried a hearty amen and went on with your own prayers, your own praises, your own preparations. Enjoy, enjoy the Lord. Amen. Amen. I love you all so much. Bye-bye.